I consider myself a lot like a prospector. I, I prospect for iron, not for gold. When I find a car, what I want to do is find a car that nobody else has seen. And I have some really, really good ways of doing that. Probably very little of which I'm going to tell anybody. See, now this guy's a horse guy. He's got a horse trailer, so there's no cars at that property. In my experience, if they're horse people, they could care less about cars. They just, they use them to pull their horses, you know. To me, being on the prowl is what I was born to do. I'm extraordinarily good at finding cars. Right now we're only, whoops, did I miss my uh, timeout? Looks like I got distracted there. Well, all I have to do is miss a turn and I find a car that no one else knew about. This is what I do when I'm on the prowl. Sometimes you gotta just let the car drive itself a little bit. This isn't by accident that we're here. There's a car here. It's just that we can't see it right now. And he likes Fords and he likes Chevys. Yeah, there's something back there. There's some American iron back there of some kind. So he and I'll meet. But this guy doesn't have the good stuff out here in, in the open. He's got it put away somewhere. We've got a uh, 1970 Oldsmobile 442 that I found out about. And I want to go over and have a look at it. And this one sounds like it might be exactly what I'm looking for. The 442 is the quintessential muscle car. It's basically an innocent mid-sized cutlass sedan with a powerful 455 cubic inch rocket V8 engine stashed under the hood. 442 stands for four speed, four barrel carburetor, and dual exhaust. Its glory years were between 1968 and 1971, although it had several incarnations before and after that period. The appeal of the muscle car lives on today and is considered by some a very good investment. If I can get it for anything under 5,000 bucks and it has a reasonably good body and it's reasonably complete, there's money on the table. I just got a sense about this car. White mailbox, this is it right here. The 442 is in the garage, see it? Yeah. Hello, gorgeous. When I found that 442 yesterday and I saw that nose of that car sticking out of that garage, that car was just talking to me like, glad you're here. Muscle car. Well, what do you got here? Well, it's uh, actually the first car I ever bought. It's my 74 Ford. Get out. That, you bought that new? No, in 78. And the wife said you have to start sleeping in it if you don't sell it, huh? No, actually the wife's kind of sick and we got a lot of hospital bills. Oh dear. So I need to sell it. it runs great. Like I say, all the mechanics, I, I do mechanic on the side too. And yeah. I'm, but that's a 650 double pumper? Yes, it is. Okay. Very good. Yeah, it runs very good actually. <laughs> the guys that really know what they're doing put a, a kill switch on the dash for it. There's just certain times when you want to slow that fuel pump down or shut it off altogether. A lot of times I find those cars and they don't have a, a kill switch on the dash. So, so do you have a defeat switch for it on mm -hmm. the dash? Okay, good, yeah. good. That's when I knew he knew what he was doing. So if he said he rebuilt the front end, if he said he'd put in, you know, work on the car, I could trust Stanley. He knew what he was doing. Trunk's a little dirty. What kind of money were you looking for on it, Stanley? Uh, well, I started at six, but I dropped it to 57 now. 57? Yeah. That's just what, well, I really need that, you know. A good, nice, you know, daily driver, they're going around in the mid, you know, low 20s. Right, right. 25, 20, so. All right. Uh, let's start it up. I just knew that that car was built to put your foot on the gas, and that's exactly what I did. <laughs> yes, sir. Nothing like a muscle car. <laughs> that car was built to do burnouts, and that's the first thing I did, and it was burn it out.
he didn't want to sell that car, he bought it. Well, it was just a few years old when he bought it, but it was his first car. But he and his wife had some medical bills and different things going on, and I had no problem paying with him exactly what he wanted for that car. It was worth every dime. And I don't get that lucky every day. $100 bills be all right? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> all right. I'm not gonna restore that car, but what I will do is bring it back alive. It's very important to me that that car is used for what it's meant to be used for. It should go to the drag strip. It should go to car shows. It should go to the drive-in on Friday night, and that's just the way it is. Stanley and I will probably get to know each other. We'll have some more talks. He's a good guy. It's good to be me. Next time on The American Car Prospector. I just got a feeling that there might be something down here in this old shed behind this building down here. And uh, I'd like to figure out if I can get in there. I can just smell it. There's something in there. Will John's latest hunch take a turn for the worse? Or is he about to unearth a treasure that's been locked away for years? Oh my gosh.